Hello everybody, this is Dr. Ashur. Uh, today we are going to continue our series of videos about peptic ulcer treatment. Previously we talked about uh, classes of drugs that are mainly inhibiting the acid secretion. Today we are going to focus on the ulcer protective agents, which include sacralpate, carbinoxolone, and bismuth compounds. So the number one, we are going to talk about sacralpate. Okay, generally speaking, in the presence of acid induced damage, so there is a damage, there is an ulcer, okay. Pepsin can have, can have access to the mucosal proteins. And previously, there was the, there was a complete uh, uh, epithelium, okay, or intact epithelium that can prevent access of pepsin into mucosal proteins. But whenever there is an ulcer, there is good access of pepsin to the mucosal protein. And it can hydrolyze this mucosal protein, and then uh, this contributes to mucosal erosion and ulceration. So it can increase the ulceration even and can induce more pain. This process can inhib be inhibited by sacral feet. How? We're going to see. Uh, generally, it consists of octasulfate of sacrose, as we will see uh, in the next slide, to which aluminum hydroxide has been added. Mechanism. In acid environment, here I highlight this part, in acid environment, needs acid environment, okay? So, why do you stress on that, doctor? Uh, because previously we said we can use uh, H2 blockers, uh, proton pump inhibitors, right? Anticholinergics, right? So, uh, these drugs or antacids, okay? So, these drugs, they, they, in, they, they, lay, they increase the pH, right? So pH may be four or more, right? Or five or six. So this increase in pH by H2 blockers or proton pump inhibitors, okay, can hinder the uh, action of uh, 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 sacral feed. It needs an acidic medium to work on to undergo uh, its extensive cross-linking, as you will see in the next slide, to produce a viscous, sticky polymer, okay? So it's kind of a coat or kind of a band-aid on an open wound, okay? There is a wound. This wound, if it's ex exposed to a just external uh, environment, you feel pain. If you coat it or add band-aid on the top of it, you feel some relief. How about wound, which is an ulcer in the stomach, which is exposed to the worst ever, you know, hell, okay? Consisting of HCL, pH of about one, pepsin, and the other aggressive factors. So uh, it forms this viscous sticky polymer that adheres to the epithelial uh, cells and ulcer bed, preventing acid and pepsin from coming in contact with the ulcer base. So if they form this coat, so acid will not have an access to the mucosal proteins, okay, will not have an access to the inside of the, the uh, lamina propria and the basement membrane and other layers of the, uh, the stomach. So in this case, this will allow healing of the ulcer, okay? So uh, in details, uh, the, the, uh, the negatively charged uh, sacrose sulfate, sacrose sulfate has negative charge, and the uh, mucosal protein have positive charge. They have arginine, amino acid, you remember? They have lysine, amino acid, which are positively charged. So negative, positive, they will bind, okay? And these proteins are in the base of ulcer, so now, the, the, the uh, sacral fate is coating the base of the ulcer or erosion form a physical barrier that restricts further coastal damage by coastal damage by pepsin uh, and mainly, I'm sorry, my, by HCL, okay? This inhibit hydrolysis, uh, HCL, you know, activates pepsin, right? From pepsinogen into pepsin. If pepsin is activated, can hydrolyze mucus, mucosal proteins, but this process, whole process, is inhibited by this wonderful compound sacral fate. How? Okay, so structure and the mechanism of action. This is generally the general structure of it. It's just a sacrose. And you have, all, you have these, you know, uh, side chains of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, I have eight, uh, uh, which is octa uh, sulfate. Okay, octa sulfate here. So this is bound to the sacrose molecule. Okay, so conversion acidic environment. We need the pH less than four. Okay. So it will undergo this ionization, and this will lead to cross-linking. They will cross-link, they will bind to each other, okay? They will bind to each other, they cross-link each other, forming kind of a paste. In addition, 
this negative charge that has that's that there we can bind to the positively charged proteins in the ulcer in the ulcer base. Okay, so this will form kind of a coating. So now this is the ulcer without anything. Okay, after you add sacral fate, you have this wonderful layer of the this paste of cross polymer of cross linked polymer of sacral fate that allows for prevent the access of uh, pepsin and acid and at the same time allows for healing of the ulcer. Okay, additional uh, cytoprotective effects increase, includes uh, things that we already know about. Prostaglandins, you know, prostaglandins, they increase bicarbonate and mucus secretion and enhance the blood flow, enhance restitution, regeneration, all of these things. And they also enhance the production of the dermal growth factor so cells can have uh, an accelerated regeneration. Uh, they, they don't have acid neutralizing action. They do not neutralize the acid. Uh, antacids, they can neutralize the acid. We said before, talked about before, about antacid, right? Okay, we said scam, right? We have uh, sodium bicarbonate, calcium carbonate, aluminum uh, compounds, okay, such as aluminum hydroxide and magnesium trisilicate. Okay, scam, S-C-A-M, makes easy. This is a good mnemonic for you to remember these antacids. These, these can neutralize the, uh, the acid, okay? But sacral fit does not have neutralizing effect, okay? So this is need to be remembered. Pharmacokinetics, it has limited solubility, which is good for the sake of its action to be local action, okay? An acidic pH, it breaks down into sacrose sulfate, as we, uh, as we uh, just mentioned, which is strongly negative, charged, okay, which can bind to the positively charged proteins in the ulcer base, if you remember, and the aluminum salt. Uh, less than 3% of the intact drug and the aluminum is absorbed from the GIT, the remainder is excreted in the feces, which makes uh, which makes makes it a drug with a low uh, side effect profile. Okay, so generally speaking, strategies to prevent gastric mucosa from gastric acid includes either you inhibit acid secretion, so inhibit the acid itself, acid production using uh, uh, H2 blockers such as cymetidine, ranitidine, mesatidine, famotidine, all these tidines. Okay. Uh, so, uh, or uh, 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 proton pump inhibitors such as the family of prazole, okay, omeprazole, lanzoprazole, pantoprazole, and many others, okay, or prostaglandin analogs, we give the, uh, the, the, the mesoprostone. Prostaglandins can do both ways, okay, it can inhibit acid secretion, inhibit gastric secretion, and also it can have cytoprotective effects by increasing mu bicarbonate, mucus, and blood flow in the gastric and mucosal cells. And muscarinic antagonists, we talked about pyrene zepine and tyrene zepine. This uh, suffix zepine is characteristic. So all of these inhibit acid secretion. Sacral fate forms a paste, okay, above the ulcer base, okay, and prevent contact between the ulcer itself and the uh, aggressive factors, HCL and pepsin. Uh, however, antacids, they neutralize the acid, okay, like the scan, we said sodium bicarbonate, aluminum, uh, I'm sorry, sodium carbonate, calcium, so scam, calcium carbonate, aluminum hydroxide, magnesium trisilicate, all of these can neutralize the acid. Uh, uses prophylaxis of stress related ulcer. We talked about it before. Okay, ulcer, you know, in a terminally ill patients, patients with burn, with uh, 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 severe disease, long term hospitalization, okay, and bleeding. Uh, mucosal inflammation ulceration, they may not respond to acid suppression, okay, such as mucosal uh, uh, mucositis, such as aftus ulcer and radiation. So these, so these ulcers produced by radiation or aftus ulcer, it's, uh, it's, it's, there is no access of the acid to this one. So there is no need for acid neutralizing activity. But again, sacral fit can form this base, okay, and can cause this and allow for healing and bile reflux gastropathy. Uh, it's also used uh, by rectal enema to, uh, for radiation uh, proctitis. So, so proctitis induced by radiation and rectal ulcers. It's administered in a dosage of one gram four times daily on an empty stomach. On an empty stomach one hour before means. There is a, you know, also a drug interaction we'll talk about later. Okay, there is bad drug interaction between sacrofit and many drugs, so there should be spaced out uh, spacing between sacral fate and other drugs. And it's taken on an empty stomach one hour before meals. Uh, the clinical use is limited as we, whenever we mention this word, uh, 
four times a day there is an issue with the compliance. So uh, uh, it's, it's clinical use is limited nowadays. Verse effects, uh, it's not absorbent, so which is good. Sarcoid is virtually devoid of uh, systemic adverse effects. The most common side effect of sarcoid is constipation due to the aluminum, because it has aluminum salt. Okay, uh, some aluminum is absorbent, so it, it, it should not be used for patients with renal insufficiency. Okay, for long period. Uh, drug interaction, as we said, it forms viscous layer on the uh, stomach. Okay, that may inhibit absorption of other drugs. So uh, it should be taken at least two hours after the administration of other drugs. So you take whatever the drug, this drug within two hours will be absorbed. Okay, it will be moved uh, from the stomach and the duodenum. So now we can use sacrophyte. Okay, the second guy is this guy, carbonic solon derived from the licorice uh, root. Okay, licorice is just a natural herb. Okay, so uh, you can use this carbix, carbonic solon, or the licorice. Uh, the whole relationship itself, but in small doses, as we'll explain later, uh, it accelerates the rate of healing of both gastric and duodenal ulcer. Okay, uh, mechanism actually is not clear, but it may accelerate the healing by increasing the mucus secretion. Okay, however, uh, the major side effect can cause uh, salt and water, uh, sodium and water uh, retention, hypertension, and hypokalemia. Okay, in patients receiving high doses of this uh, carbinoxolone. So use it in moderate doses and don't use it for people with hypertension. So hypertensive patients should not use carbinoxolone or even licorice. Licorice, this guy, licorice extract or uh, decoction or whatever. Okay, finally, bismuth compounds. Okay, the precise mechanism of action is not clear. However, again, it's kind of a little bit similar but not identical. Okay, it calls to the sacral phase. It calls the ulcer, okay, and the erosion, creating protective layer against pepsin and acid, uh, uh, pepsin and acid, yes. So uh, there is no access of these corrosive agents and aggressive agents to the uh, ulcer, uh, mucosal proteins under the ulcer, so which is good, okay. So kind of, again, kind of a band-aid on the top of an open wound. It interacts with glycoproteins, okay? There, we, in the sacral fetus, it interacts with positively charged proteins. So, uh, bismuth uh, interacts with glycoproteins in necrotic mucosal tissue to coat and protect the ulcer creator, okay? The, the opening of the, surf, the surface of the ulcer. Um, again, similar to sacral fate, it can use also prostaglandin secretion, production, uh, muc muc mucus secretion, bicarbonate production, okay, which also can help with the healing process. Uh, one unique effect of bismuth, it, it detaches uh, H. pylori from the surface of the mucosa and directly kills the organism. This is the first time among the, all the classes we talked about, we didn't mention the word that this class of drug kills the H. pylori, but uh, bismuth can number one, detach it from the surface of the mucosa, from the surface of the mucosa, number two, it kills the, uh, this bacterium. Uh, two bismuth compounds are available, bismuth subsalicylate, okay, it's non prescription, and the prescription one is bismuth, bismuth substrate potassium. Okay, uh, they are uh, frequently uh, uh, prescribed in combination with antibiotics, mainly for the eradication of H. pylori, okay to eradicate H. pylori and prevent ulcer recurrence, because H. pylori itself can uh, help with or can lead to uh, ulcer recurrence. Generally speaking, okay, uh, other than bismuth, triple therapy we talked about, we talked about uh, lanzoprazole, clarithromycin, amoxicillin, uh, this triple therapy for eradication of peptic ulcer, we can, we can replace amoxicillin with metronidazole, it's convenient, okay, it's, I mean, compliance is okay, because just twice a day, for two weeks, okay, I prepare for this line therapy. However, if the patient is not sensitive or, or there is a resistance of H. pylori to the, uh, this, this uh, first uh, choice regimen, you can go to the uh, second choice, which is the uh, quadru or quadruple therapy or bismuth-based quadruple therapy containing, again, proton pump inhibitor. Well, I'm repeating, we use proton pump inhibitors uh, in the regimens for treatment of H. pylori because they are the most potent 
uh, drugs for treatment of peptic ulcer, the most potent drug that inhibit acid secretion, more than H2 blocker, uh, plus bismuth, of course, plus tetracycline antibiotic, plus metronidazole antibiotic. Uh, this, uh, this, that's why it's called quadruple one, two, three, four. They are commonly used as second line therapies. In addition, bismuth uh, subsalicylate sub is used for the prevention and the treatment of traveler uh, diarrhea. So uh, the, it has, again, direct antibacterial effect, okay, and it can uh, uh, inhibit uh, uh, the enterotoxins the produced by the bacteria used for treatment of traveler's diarrhea. Uh, adverse effects uh, cause harm with darkling of the stool. It's just because of the, the component itself, okay, which may be confused with GI bleeding, but it's not GI bleeding. There is no melina, okay, don't worry. Uh, liquid formulations may cause harmless darkening of the tongue. Again, it's harmless. It's just due to the bismuth itself. Uh, high dosage of bismuth subsalicylate may lead to salicylate toxicity. Okay, salicylate toxicity. We know when we you know we studied the non-steroid antifungal drugs. We know uh, salicylate poisoning can cause nausea, vomiting, uh, tinnitus, uh, metabolic acidosis, respiratory alkalosis, hyperthermia, and all of these are under the salicylate toxicity. This is because you use the bismuth subsalicylate. So, so salicylate component is there. Uh, they shouldn't uh, should be used uh, for short periods only. Okay, should be avoided in patients with renal insufficiency. Okay, that's it for now. Thank you so much uh, for your time and for watching the video. And I uh, see you soon in our uh, next video about peptic ulcer. We will talk about the natural remedies for treatment of peptic ulcer. See you. Bye.